We wondered why it was that salmonella infections from fresh produce actually cause such severe symptoms. What does happen to the pathogens, to the salmonella, when they get into the salad bag? The very first thing we did was to actually go out, buy some bag salads, and separate them into different salad leaf sorts. So we had spinach, rockets, lamb's lettuce, and all the various different coloured salad leaves that, that you actually find. We got the pure juice, we mashed it, traditionally with the pestle and mortar, and we extracted it and filter sterilized it because we were only interested to see whether the plant-derived chemicals from the salad juices can stimulate salmonella growth. What we then did was to take these juices and investigate what their effects would be on salmonella's biology that would be relevant to its capacity to actually colonise salad leaves and also to cause foodborne infection. And the first thing we did was to actually look at growth in water because this is the fluid that the salad leaves are washed in and which they will actually be in when in the salad bag to actually maintain crispness and texture. So this salad juice uh, can stimulate salmonella growth massively in this salad plastic bag environment. Salmonella also attaches more aggressively to the salad plastic bag when it comes in contact with salad juices. And salmonella can even grow in the fridge much faster when it comes in contact with salad juices. Now, all the textbooks say that foodborne pathogens like salmonella actually prefer the temperature of their host, which is 37 degrees. But what we found is that exposure to salad juices actually causes the salmonella to grow within the refrigerator. So we have two aspects here that are actually of concern to microbiologists and also the food industry. The fact that exposure to the salad juices and the juices also that are leached into the salad bag causes the salmonella to attach itself to the salad leaves and to the interior of the salad bag that much more strongly. And much more concerning was the fact that exposure to the salad juices seemed to upregulate the virulence of the salmonella such that it possibly would be more likely to cause an infection if it and the salad leaves were eaten at the same time. So the take home message from all of this is not that we advise you not to eat salad leaves, but I think there are some sensible things that need to be taken into account. Everybody understands the connection with food poisoning and things like undercooked chicken, eggs and also seafood. The idea that you can also get food poisoning from a salad garnish and not from the chicken main course is a new one. And I think the public does need to be aware now that there is potentially a food poisoning risk associated with salad leaves. It's a very rare one, but nonetheless, it has to be considered. So obviously, a priority has to be for salad growers and microbiologists together that we actually stop the pathogen entering the salad bag. And that is one of our priorities in the future, to work with salad growers to find ways of stopping foodborne pathogens like salmonella and E. coli from getting into the salad bag.